Hi guys, Olive here. Today I am here to bring you my September 2016 wrap up and my October 2016 TBR. Just to give you a very brief life update like I normally do at the beginning of these videos, my job is continuing to be crazy. I'm going to be transitioning to a part-time status employee for the remaining time that I am in school just to help me balance those two things. I am fortunate enough that that can be an option right now. Um, for the sake of my sanity and for the sake of my schoolwork, this being my last semester, it's very important that I'm able to dedicate the amount of time to that that I need to. So the good news for you guys, hopefully, is that I will have fewer commitments on that end. So hopefully I can dedicate a little bit more time to my reading and to this channel, especially with nonfiction November coming up soon. Amongst the craziness in September, I did finish four books. So I would like to talk to you about those. I'd like to tell you what I'm currently reading and what my plans are for October. The first book that I finished in September was Back to Moscow by Guillermo Arades. I highly enjoyed this book and it made me feel so many things that I felt compelled to do a book review on it, during which I took three shots of vodka. I knew going into it, it was either going to be one of the best things I ever did or a dumpster fire. And thankfully, I think it turned out pretty okay. So if you'd like to see me take vodka shots, act a hot mess and geek out about Russia, I'll put the link in the description box for you to watch it. The next book I finished in September was an audio book. I listened to How to Win Friends and Influence People by Dale Carnegie. It's a pretty classic book on how to deal with people and how to build successful relationships, how to make people like you, how to be a people person. I was really interested to read it because I know just like many people out there, I know I could be better in dealing with other people. I know that this is a highly regarded, respected book and I was looking forward to listening to it. Very early on, I discovered that this book is essentially centered around the idea of do unto others as you would have them do unto you, but like on crack. The book has very central tenets of like how you should behave around other people if you want to have them like you. So one of them is don't criticize others. A second one is be genuinely interested in other people. I think another one is along the lines of like show an interest in what the other person is interested in. A lot of this I did find valuable. I do think that criticizing people is a really poor way to handle things because if you do that, they're immediately on the defensive. But if you're kind of softer about it and you explain things in a nicer way or take some of the blame onto yourself, let them save face a little bit, they're more willing to alter their ways because they haven't felt attacked first. So that was really valuable. I do keep a lot of what the book said in mind. Some of that I found a little bit depressing, however. There was this one example that the author gave in the book where he talked about this one event he went to, I don't know if it was a wedding or what, but he was talking to a guy who was, I believe, a botanist. And he was talking to this guy about his field. And this botanist was going on and on and on about his work and the things he was interested in. It didn't sound like the author had time to get a word in edgeways. And then afterward, the botanist was this guy's biggest fan because essentially it seems like he got to talk at him for hours on end and felt like someone also cared about his field and so really, really loved this guy. And it did seem at times like this book was advocating, let people talk at you endlessly because they are very interested in themselves and have no interest in what you're going to say. And while I can see why that would certainly make someone like you, I don't think that's a good building block for a long lasting relationship. In my opinion, if you're actually gonna win a friend, then they need to be interested in your life as well. There needs to be a give and take. That was the major problem I had with this book. And I say major problem because it really has gotten in the way of the way I see this book as a whole. So as time has gone on, that's kind of what I'm taking away from this book is that it did have certain pieces of advice that I will use that I did think were really valuable. But at the end of the day, some of it seems a little bit too much like you're playing people. The next book I finished in September was A Natural History of Dragons by Marie Brennan. This is a fantasy of manners type book that takes place in a different world than our own, but it's kind of based on our worlds. The country that the main characters are from greatly resembles Great Britain. This is a novel told in a memoir style fashion in this alternate world there is a woman by the name of Lady Trent. She is a very famous dragon hunter, naturalist, and this is her account of her travels and her experiences when she was younger. She alludes in this book 
to her previous works, obviously, which do not really exist, about her experiences in her different places. But this is her as an older woman now going back and telling the real story, or at least as she sees it now that she is older and wiser. So this is her account of her upbringing, how she first got interested in dragons, how she went about finding a husband, and then her first expedition to go and see dragons. While I didn't feel like this book had a ton of substance, it was a lot of fun. I really liked Isabella's character. She's not too deep, at least not at this point in the series. This is a series of books, but she's really bookish. She's really smart. She's really fiery. She wants to go out there and learn things for herself. She feels the constraints of society to act a certain way because she's a woman, but then she also has this desire to go out and see the world and study dragons. It's her passion. I gave it four stars. It's definitely something that I'm going to be continuing with. It was a lot of fun. And the last book I finished in September was The Unchangeable Spots of Leopards by Christopher Jansma. How to even begin describing this book? I'm going to tell you the bare minimum in terms of plot of this book because a lot of the impact that this book has is the psychological aspect of it that it's doing with you as a reader. This book, to say the least, has a very unreliable narrator. He tells you over and over again, the reader, as well as telling other people that he is a liar and that you shouldn't trust him. That being said, he is giving you an account of his life where he came from in North Carolina, his situation with his mother, the fact that he never really knew his father. He talks about how through circumstances that you hear about in the book, he ends up at a prestigious university studying creative writing. He meets another writer at this university that he has a very strained relationship with. They're friends, but they're also competitors. They feed off each other in positive and negative ways. And then a childhood friend of this half friend, half nemesis of the main character ends up being an ongoing, really tortured love interest of the main character. The book follows how their relationship changes over the years about falling out and reconnecting. The book takes place all over the world with the main character traveling from place to place in certain parts of the novel. This was a very intense book to read. First and foremost, you never learn the first name of the main character. Some of the other characters in this book never learn his real name. Sometimes he's assuming different identities. And again, I don't wanna to get too detailed because I don't wanna spoil it, but I'm not even sure he knows who he really is. There is literally a turning point in this book where you are not sure what has been happening to you for the first half of the novel. I was very impressed with what Christopher Jansma did in this book. It really does play with you as a reader in all the best ways. I love that this book took place in different countries. I love that this book talked about differences between cultures. I also surprisingly really liked not knowing what was going on all the time. I'm someone who normally likes to know what's going on at all times. While I was very impressed with this book, and really enjoyed the reading experience. I do have to say I was waiting for a little bit more from it. I was really expecting this to be something along the lines of the Czar of Love and Techno. And while it did do that in some ways with me, it didn't go quite far enough. And since I've seen it done so much better in the Czar of Love and Techno, I couldn't give this five stars, but I'll say it got close. I would definitely recommend it. And if you do read it, come and talk to me about it because I want to have spoilery discussions about this book because it's just it's messing with my mind. Now, when it comes to what I am currently reading, which is essentially everything, given that this was another busy month, I was kind of dipping in and out of things. It was not a very structured reading experience for me this month. I will say that I'm no longer currently reading Uprooted. I got halfway through it and then got distracted by A Natural History of Dragons. And I didn't want to force my way through Uprooted if I wasn't 100% invested in it. You just don't do that with your favorite books. That is not a good idea. But I will say, if you were looking forward to hearing what I thought about Uprooted, I did do a review of it last year when I read it for the first time, which is very gushy. I'll put a link to that review down below if you want to check that out. I am currently reading Yevgeny or Eugene Onegin by Alexander Pushkin. I'm actually reading this one out loud, which I'm surprisingly loving. This is an epic poem, a story told in an epic poem, and it's beautiful. This is an awesome translation of it. This translation was done by Walter Arndt. It's really exciting. 
finally starting on this journey of picking up more Russian literature. I know a lot of people assume when they first come to my channel hearing that I love Russia, that I am well seasoned in reading Russian literature, which is the opposite of the truth. So hopefully someday those assumptions will be correct. But I'm looking forward to talking more about this one after I finish it. I'm still working through A Gentleman in Moscow. You already know the story about that. I'm still working through The Empress of Art. And I'm listening to two audiobooks right now. I was in need of an audiobook, so I picked up Special Topics and Calamity Physics. This is kind of a campus novel. This is Marisha Pessel's first novel before she wrote Night Film. And I've heard mixed opinions about this one. It seems very divisive. Some people love it, some people hate it. It's certainly interesting thus far. It has a little bit of a Gilmore Girls snappy voice to it, which I am always on board for. So I can't wait to see how this one progresses. After I started listening to Special Topics and Calamity Physics, I got a notification from my library that an audiobook that I've been waiting on the holds list for for forever had just become available. And that is The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. So I am listening to that one currently as well. This is all about habits, where they reside in the brain, how they affect our behavior, if they're breakable, if so, the ways in which they are breakable. I am about a quarter of the way into this and it is absolutely fascinating so far. This is a very popular piece of nonfiction and I can see why it is so interesting, really engaging. You can see how it would have an effect on everyone's life. I'm very excited to talk about this one in my October wrap up. And then lastly, I just picked up Goddess by Kelly Gardner. This is historical fiction based around a real woman who lived during the reign of the Sun King in France. She had quite the interesting life. She is taught to fence in the court of the Sun King. At 13, she is taken as a mistress by the king's master of horse. She runs away with her fencing master, falls in love with a nun, and hides from the authority sentenced to burn at the stake. And then within another year, she has become a beloved star at the famed Paris Opera. The reason why I felt so compelled to pick this book up now is because I have started to practice my audiobook narration skills and started practicing on this book, and it has immediately captured my interest. I am not that far into this one yet, but I am really excited to keep going. I love the tone of it. I know it's going to be an amazing story. Now moving on to what I'm planning to read in October. I think I'm doing Doing three buddy reads this month, the first being Bride's Head Revisited by Evelyn Waugh. I'm reading this with Kate Howe and Hillary of Your Robot Friend. Toward the end of the month, I'm going to be buddy reading Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier with Kate from Kate Howe, Kate from the novel Nomad, Lauren from Burt Fiction, Stephanie from That's What She Read, and I think Brie Hill is joining in with us as well. Embarrassingly enough, I've never read any Daphne du Maurier. I have been meaning to for a really long time. I know that everyone loves this book. I'm so excited to read it. Also, it matches my aesthetic today. The last book I think I'm going to be buddy reading is the Newtana French book, Trespasser, which comes out, I think, this upcoming week. I think I'm going to be buddy reading this with Sabrina of Unmanaged Mischief and Rincey of Rincey Reads. We're all big Tana French fans, and I thought it would be amazing to read this next installment in the Dublin Murder Squad series with them. I may not be a huge fan of horror, but since we are in October and this book looks fascinating, I'm going to be picking up Bats of the Republic. This was written by Zachary Thomas Dodson. It's what they call an illuminated novel. It has illustrations and other different types of media within the story. I know Rachel from Ray of Books recently read this one and really liked it, so I'm excited to read this one. And the last book I I have planned to read in the month of October will be an audiobook listen, but it's actually a reread. The first time I read The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern, I read it in print form, but Audible a few weeks back had a daily deal on the audiobook narrated by Jim Dale, whose narration skills I did warm up to while listening to the Harry Potter series. So once I'm done with the two audiobooks that I'm listening to right now, I am going to re-experience The Night Circus on audio. Since my reread of Uprooted didn't pan out how I wanted it to, I'm really excited to start over with The Night Circus. This is one of my favorite books of all time. And I think this is the absolute perfect season to read it in. So I'm excited for it. So that is everything that I read in September, what I'm currently reading and what I'm planning to read for October. As always, I would love to hear your thoughts on any of the books I've mentioned. If you've read any of them, want to read any of them, or are now interested in reading them, I would love to hear it in the comments section below. Or if you'd like to chat with me somewhere else in social media, all the links to all of my profiles are in the description box below. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you're having a great start to your October and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.